All right. Well, we're here this morning uh, taking up S30, which is a bill that would uh, prohibit carrying, um, having firearms in certain buildings, including hospitals. And I believe that's why Dr. Sexton is here to talk to us on behalf of the Vermont Medical Society. Doctor, welcome. Uh, I'm Dick Sears. I chair of the committee. I'll let the rest of the committee introduce themselves, starting with the vice chair. Uh, good morning, Dr. Sexton. I'm Phil Baruth. I represent Chittenden County. Good morning, Joe. Uh, hi, hi, I'm Jeanette White. I represent Wyndham County. Good morning. Hi, I'm Alice Nitka. I represent Windsor County and a couple of towns out of the county. Good morning, Doc. I'm Joe Benning. I represent Caledonia County District, which is all of Caledonia County and the six northeasternmost towns in Orange County. Good morning. And we have, with usually we're sitting around a table in Montpelier, it's easy to go introducing by order. My visual of who's in what chair is different from anybody else. Anyway, Doctor, welcome to Senate Judiciary. Um, we look forward to this. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. Um, uh, I am. Um, so my name is Doctor Ryan Sexton. I, I'm a Vermont uh, licensed emergency physician. I practice um, clinically at uh, Northeastern Vermont Regional Hospital in St. Johnsbury. Um, I serve as vice president of the Vermont Medical Society. I'm also president of the Vermont chapter of the American um, College of Emergency Physicians. And um, uh, I'm the medical director at NVRH of the, of the emergency department and immediate past president of the medical staff there. Um, I'm here speaking today on behalf of uh, the Vermont Medical Society um, in full support of um, uh, S30 um, and the prohibition of firearms um, in hospitals. Um, Aside from, you know, responding law enforcement officers, no one should be permitted to carry firearms in hospitals. Um, it's my understanding that most uh, Vermont hospitals share this opinion um, and have internal policies banning firearms on hospital grounds. And uh, while this hospital level ban is appropriate, um, I do feel that the state should support our hospitals um, and our healthcare workers in legislating this ban across the state. Um, I work with a caring team of nurses and physicians in a challenging and um, unpredictable uh, environment. We never know what's going to come in and show up on our door. We treat everyone uh, with every condition uh, with the, the, you know, the goal of doing as much as we can for each individual patient. Our environment can be emotionally uh, charged at times. Um, unfortunately, it's not uncommon for our frontline staff uh, to face verbal threats and physical assaults, even from patients and uh, visitors. Um, our frontline staff are at high risk of injury. Um, and I'd like to share a personal example. Um, a few months ago, I took care of a young man in his 20s. He had new onset of acute and severe psychosis uh, and schizophrenia. Um, working with our mental health uh, partners, um, it was determined that um, he could not safely be discharged home from the emergency department. Um, um, had to be, uh, he would require inpatient psychiatric treatment. Uh, so while he was being held in RED, awaiting that transfer, um, I did meet with the young man's parents uh, to explain his situation and the treatment plan. Um, and upon hearing of uh, his son's condition um, and the plan to transfer him, um, the patient's father became quite upset, um, frustrated, um, and I'll never forget this. He, he stated very clearly, uh, if you put my son in the hospital, I will come after you and your children. Um, it was clear that he meant this. Um, security uh, immediately responded. Thankfully, their office was right next door to where I was meeting the, the, the family. Um, and he was escorted off the campus. Um, and fortunately, in this case, he was not carrying a firearm. Um, but had he been armed, I do believe this incident would have ended differently. Um, there have been other concerning incidents at NVRH um, and other hospitals around the state. And uh, hearing from my uh, emergency medicine um, uh, partners around the state, uh, where, for example, in 
our ED waiting room, I had a patient present um, intoxicated, brandishing a firearm with threatening behavior. Again, this incident was de-escalated by security and fortunately, luckily, no one was harmed. This is the level of threat that, that we face in our practice. Um, we have unfortunately experienced a 2018 fatal shooting. I'm sure you're all aware of at Dartmouth involving a firearm. And just yesterday, I read of another fatal shooting of a physician at a healthcare facility in Texas. Um, we have been fortunate to not have similar in Vermont recently, uh, but we remain at risk. And I feel that Vermont should do more uh, to mitigate this risk. S30 will protect patients and their loved ones. It will protect frontline nurses and physicians. And I urge you all to please vote in favor of this, uh, this bill and support um, improving safety in our hospitals across the state. Senator Bruce. Uh, thank you very much, doctor. I appreciate the testimony. I'm wondering, um, the pandemic presents its own medical challenges. Overlaying that, unfortunately, are political challenges where there's been a, I would say, under the past administration in the White House, there was a pitting of scientists and medical professionals against people who declared themselves um, promoters of freedom or liberty. And that has in other states produced additional friction in medical environments. Are you seeing that uh, here at all? Is there uh, uh, an incidence of people who are upset about masking or restrictions due to COVID? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, what, is, what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I distinctly recall um, uh, a conversation I had with my CEO a few months back where um, a, 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 a patient was irate, um, calling frequently and complaining about the, the mask requirement. Uh, this was early in the pandemic. I, I don't know if that patient's set up. <coughs> Um, more recently, I know that, you know, with the visitation policies that we've put in place to protect uh, patients and staff, as well as visitors, um, patients have been quite frustrated with that. And, you know, we, we're, we're doing all that we can to connect to patients and their families. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't tell you the number of calls I make in my shifts now where in, in the past we'd have, you know, visitors with patients, uh, and I could go in and speak with them. Um, or as I discussed in this case out in the, in the waiting room, um, and now we're having to use uh, a phone and, and try and actually to implement video conferencing with them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Senator White. Thank you, doctor. Um, my, I guess my question is not, um, should, should there be a prohibition against um, firearms in hospitals, but what should be the, um, the, penalty for it and this creates it as a criminal offense with uh, resulting in a criminal record for the person who maybe even inadvertently brings their sidearm in because they carry it all the time. So I guess my question is if there were another way to enforce this without a criminal penalty, would that satisfy the need? Um, you know, I, I, I can't really, you know, speak to the, the penalty. I, I just, I would hope that, um, you know, with, with a, a, a ban, um, that alone um, from the state level uh, may uh, uh, dissuade people from bringing firearms to hospitals. Um, um, you know, I, I, I don't know what the repercussions of that should be, but I think that it should be uh, clear um, and supported uh, our hospitals, as I said, um, mm -hmm. is my hospital, and, and I know many um, have internal policies banning this. Um, but uh, I think they would benefit, uh, you know, from the protection of a gun law um, pro prohibiting. Thank you, Senator Benning. So, Doc, <clears throat> I'm not sure we've ever actually met before, but I'm on your board of corporators. And the last corporators meeting I went to, I walked into the building past a sign that said no firearms. If Bobby Clark is in the security booth, 
uh, who's a deputy sheriff, by the way, for oh, the rest okay, of the Okay, thank you. I didn't know who Bobby um, Clark was. <clears throat> okay, well, he's he's one of several who actually occupy the security booth at the hospital. If an individual walks into the building now and is carrying a firearm, um, are all staff authorized to say to that person, you must leave and not come back with that firearm? Yeah, this presents a bit of a, of a conflict. Um, as I said, in, in, in emergency medicine, we treat everyone and we have to treat everyone, right? Everyone who comes to the door. Um, and so, um, you know, if someone were to come in and when they've come in with, with weapons, um, uh, you know, I, I personally would not feel comfortable um, uh, addressing it. I know many of my nurses would not feel comfortable addressing it. I believe I would involve Bobby Clark and security and say, you know, we, we have a patient who ignored the sign and I'd like you to uh, uh, please, uh, you know, address the issue. Um, so I, I'm not sure that I quite understand the need for a law that creates a criminal offense if you have the ability now to eject someone from the premises. Um, if somebody's coming in with nefarious intent, I'm not sure that sign or any law is going to uh, dissuade them from doing whatever the act yeah. is, but I'm trying to wrap my head around why we would develop a new criminal offense. And let me give another example. If a person comes in with a gunshot wound from a hunting accident and is brought into the emergency room by somebody who is actually carrying a side piece from when they were out hunting, you are automatically creating a criminal offense for that individual uh, and they had no nefarious intent whatsoever. You still have the ability to ask them to take the firearm outside, lock it in the car, but you haven't created a blanket criminal offense for that person. And so I'm, I guess I'm trying to struggle with this because you already have the ability to eject someone but I'm getting real leery about um, bringing in a new criminal offense. I, I, that's just a comment. I have one other question for you. My primary care provider is Corner Medical, which is uh, a part of the hospital system. Do you happen to know if they have uh, a sign out front of their door as well? I, I do not know. They're not my primary care. I, I don't practice there. And I, I the last time I <clears> heard, <throat> take notice, um, they may. Okay. In, in Bennington, it's a campus. So the entire campus is supposed to be weapon and tobacco free. Um, so I, that's the sign and, and the office buildings were on the camp. Most of them were on the campus. Senator Booth. Uh, just speaking to Senator Benning's comments, someone would have to be charged in order to be criminally prosecuted. So if, if a state's attorney thought that it was an honest mis misunderstanding that someone had been wounded and it was found later that they had a weapon on their person, they wouldn't automatically uh, go to jail or receive a criminal penalty. There would be discretion involved. The other thing I would say is that um, we do have criminal penalties now uh, attached to school buildings and property and courthouses. And we have lived with that and that has come to seem a very common sense set of provisions. So this would add hospitals to that um, as well as government buildings. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not creating anything we don't already observe in our law I understood the doctor to be saying that he thought it would have uh, a beneficial effect in terms of sending out the message statewide that hospitals are places where it is no longer um, to be even considered bringing a weapon onto that property. I, uh, doctor, did you want to comment or ask? I'm sure. Uh, yes, I would. I would agree with Senator Baruth. Um, that that um, is my uh, position. Senator Nick, just I'm just wondering with regard to you had said um, the policy 
or that you, you think that the policy should be that um, no firearms al allowed on hospital grounds even. So presently it seems like um, places where someone does show up with a gun that people have been able to ask the person calmly, just say, you know, we don't want to allow guns here. Um, could you please take it out and lock it in your car? And of course the car would be <coughs> part of the hospital grounds. So is it really that it's needed on grounds um, as well as in the building? Is that your thinking? Um, personally, I, um, you know, I, I think uh, within the facility structure would makes sense to me. Um, okay. That would allow people to have their firearms in their, and secure in their vehicle. I, I, <clears throat> I know the arguments and all that, but the word knowing needs to be somewhere in this bill. Um, I think um, I used the example when we first started discussing this. I went through TSA at the Albany Airport long before the COVID, by the way. Um, and I have a little knife that I use to hold my um, dollar bills and uh, cash. So uh, it's, it's a cash and, and they caught it as I went through security and they took it. I had no intention of bringing a knife on, on in the uh, airport or onto the plane. <clears throat> So, I mean, it was simply I lost it. So I, I think as we go forward with this bill, it's knowingly, um, I think the person you described who was out hunting and the person accidentally shot didn't rec real, even realize their, their thoughts were all with their friend who just got shot. And they didn't realize they had a gun with them. I think they would probably be very calm about the whole thing. And, you know, please take the gun out of here. I realize you didn't even know you had it. Got them now. Blah, blah, blah. So I, I think that's an important thing. I I've been struggling with this bill, um, and I understand the arguments by some that you know if if I don't have a gun um, to defend, I need the gun to defend myself. If somebody comes in, this is only going to stop good people from bringing guns in, not to those who intend. I just struggled with this, as Senator Baruth just mentioned. You know, it's been going on in the in the um, in courthouses for a long time. Most of the um, all the hospitals I'm familiar with have some form of security. Um, so I'm struggling with. I, I know the argument about certain government buildings. I've heard that um, child care facility. We talked a little bit about. I don't understand the hospitals. I just uh, I don't think it's appropriate to have firearms in hospitals. I'm in there for something else, seeing the emergency in the emergency room. I don't want to have to worry about you know, somebody else. Senator White. Um, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Um, I'm trying to be a good committee member and not make noise, but Thank you. <laughs> I would like to ask the doctor, in terms of sending a message, I, I understand that it would be, it, there might be more force um, to, more of a message to the public if it were a statewide prohibition. I guess my question is, does that prohibition need to be a criminal offense? I struggle, I, I struggle with this bill also, and because I don't want to create more crimes and more people with criminal records. And so would a civil violation um, a, be a prohibition with a civil uh, violation as the a result be send the same message? It would be a statewide uh, prohibition, but it would be a civil offense as opposed to criminal. Yeah, um, it, it, again, I, I, I'm sorry that I just, I can't speak to what the offense should be. I just, I think that there should be a very clear message um, and that, that would be the, what, what, what my request would be. And the, the, I, I just will make the comment about that we have it in schools and courthouses and that there are criminal offenses there. And were we having this discussion 
were I involved in the discussion now about courthouses and schools, I might have the same same concerns about it being criminal or civil. So, thank you, Senator Bruce. Uh, yeah, just to to tie on to what Jeanette just said, that's one of my actually one of my fears about the committee exploring a civil penalty for this. And I'll explain what I mean. When we decriminalized mm -hmm. marijuana, we started by making it not a criminal offense, but a civil offense. And the message was very clear. We were stepping down the amount of scrutiny and the amount of punishment. And I worry that we would be inadvertently here. First of all, we'd be creating two tiers, one for schools and courthouses, one for hospitals and government buildings. That wouldn't necessarily make sense. And eventually somebody will say, well, let's decriminalize schools and courthouses and make those civil offenses. And that is exactly the wrong direction for us to be moving in. It's completely contrary to the spirit of this bill, which is to say guns have become an overwhelming problem in our society at certain places and moments. You know, the Capitol insurrection being the, the most recent, but also in government buildings around the country, and as we've heard in hospitals. So I, I think the idea that we would send the message that we're, we're adopting a lesser penalty than we've previously put in place for schools and courthouses, that, that seems a dangerous move to me. Uh, I think we should, we're kind of arguing about the bill with the witness from the yeah. Medical yeah. Society. I prefer to hear from the witnesses, his thoughts and that of other docs. Yeah, you know, I, I would just add that uh, a few years ago, I recall looking at the school bill uh, uh, law and wondering why that was not this case for hospitals as well. Um, I, I went so far as actually to yeah. take that law and substitute out school for hospital just to, you know, uh, and then proposed it and sent it to some um, legislators uh, to see if, if that were um, something they want to pursue. Um, so I was very happy to see this bill, um, uh, you know, come into discussion. And um, it, it does make sense to me that that level uh, that schools are afforded would be also afforded to uh, hospitals. Okay. Senator well, Benning and then Senator White. Uh, one of the um, rationales behind one component of this bill was the concept of somebody coming into the hospital with a gun to raid the pharmaceutical department. And I'm curious to know whether you have any evidence of that ever happening in the state of Vermont. I, I do not. I, I, I would not know that. With respect to the Dartmouth situation, my understanding of that was a son brought a weapon in and killed his mother. Do you happen to know what her diagnosis was at the time? I believe if I recall, it's, it's been a while, but I believe it was a, a, a brain aneurysm, I think. Um, okay, thank you. So um, I, I guess I'm up. Um, I, in terms of um, extending it to, I, I don't see any reason for guns in hospitals. But would we all should we also extend it to urgent care centers? There are there um, are urgent care centers around the the state. We have one in Brattleboro, and if if one of the reasons was for the pharmaceuticals, should we extend it to pharmacies? Um, you know, I can speak to the um, urgent care or as we have at Corner Medical and the Northeast Kingdom Express care facilities. Yeah, I, you know, I, I do think that they um, uh, probably have a similar threat. Um, they're not dealing with as much uh, typically life or death situations with high emotions, um, emotionally charged environment. Um, uh, patients aren't typically staying there for prolonged periods of time. They're not seeing the uh, acute psychiatric illness and intoxications that we see um, presenting to emergency departments. Um, so I do think it's a it's it's a it's a different level of risk, but but there is a risk there as well. And and our 
In terms of the, I can't remember the definition of the terms of the hospital here, but does this include the retreat and the um, state psychiatric hospital in Berlin? Are they considered uh, hospitals under this? Uh, Eric, Eric might be able to answer that or the sponsor. Okay. Well, you're a sponsor, maybe. Well, Eric. I am a sponsor, but um, <laughs> yes, there, I was a sponsor. There is a, uh, uh, cross-reference to VSA. Yeah, I just can't remember what that. Is. I can't, Eric, I, I can't remember answer? either. I can't remember what that definition right. is. That's the definition of licensing for hospitals. So any hospital that needs to be licensed would fall under that. Whether that would include an urgent care center, I think it would include. They have to be licensed, right? But licensed by who? By the state. Well, All right, well, okay. I guess we, we should. Can I'd we like focus on the witness? He's, yeah. yeah. Well, he probably didn't drive a long distance to be with us today, but he is <laughs> taking time out of his busy day to be with us. So maybe we could focus on the witness and then discuss the merits of the bill or what's in the bill and what's not in the bill. Uh, are there other questions for the Dr. Sex? Doctor, have you heard from any doctors who are, say, uh, opposed to this bill from the medical society? I have not. <clears throat> um, and, you know, I have not heard from any doctors, uh, emergency room docs in my area in Bennington, uh, Dr. Dobson or anyone else who's uh, opposed to the bill. No, I think for the, you know, we, we would adhere to our internal hospital policy, which is to ourselves, not carry firearms in the hospital. Um, you know, the concern would be that others visiting our hospital don't know that internal policy. Um, okay. Other questions for Dr. Sexton? Doctor, thanks so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. No, thank you for thank having you. me. I appreciate the thank opportunity. You. Thank hey, you. Um, now we could continue a little discussion for a few minutes if you want. We're about five minutes left. And, uh, I, I've scheduled uh, the commissioner at DCF next week on this bill because we haven't really talked about childcare facilities and since they licensed, probably should hear from them. Um, and then com more committee discussion on it. But I'm, um, <laughs> I, I do. I have a hard time with with the hospitals and not having some law. And I, I really want to look at <clears throat> whether it's beefing up our unlawful trespass laws or whatever. Could could a how could a hospital deal with somebody without this law? They already are. How? Yeah. There's a sign out front that says, "Don't bring a weapon in." If a weapon is brought in, there's an argument that's been made. They have the ability to eject them. And if they are ejected and choose to come back in, they are now violating a notice against trespass, which is in fact a criminal offense. So why are we adding on something else? Dick, could I, could I ask if Eric could, we've, we've referenced this for days and days and we haven't let Eric address it. Um, there, there's a whole argument that's been laid out about uh, 3705, and it, it seems like having Eric give us his opinion would be um, <coughs> if he's prepared, apropos. If he's prepared at this time, um, if he'd rather wait till next Wednesday, I'm fine with that too. No, oh, it's fine. It's the, it's similar to the to the email that I had sent committee members and uh, you know it's roughly roughly similar to what Senator Benning is saying and what the commissioner said I, I was drawing a distinction between I think last week the committee had had been told that simply coming into the hospital but let's or, or a store or any place that's posted a sign that says no firearms allowed that a person who then comes on the premises with a firearm is trespassing and that's that I do not agree with that. I don't think that's the case. The a trespass is a is an entrance upon land 
uh, after being directed not to do so, after being ordered either to leave or not to come out. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have to do with what you can or cannot do while you're on the property. So if someone comes on a, 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 into a hospital or into a store that has posted uh, uh, the fact that there's no firearms permitted, someone will then somehow have to have an interaction with that person and inform him or her that they have to leave and uh, that they're not permitted on the property anymore. If at that time the person either refuses to leave or as Senator Benning said, goes out and comes back in after being ordered not to do so, at that point they've committed a trespass. And so at that point uh, law enforcement could be called or if, or if it's a place like a hospital where security is already there, they can, they can uh, inform the person or charge the person with a trust. I, I guess I don't, I don't think there's, I don't know whether law enforcement is also present at a hospital, whether it's private security, I don't know, but they certainly could be uh, arrested at that point. I think you may recall the commissioner talking about a rule three of the rules of criminal procedures to when a person can be arrested. If they're committing a misdemeanor in the presence of an officer, they can be arrested. So I, I think that if the person is continuing on, the property, they are committing the the uh, trespass misdemeanor and they can be arrested. But that's only after uh, well, that, that, the the communication. That's the difference between the bill and the trespass situation. The bill doesn't require that interim communication between someone at the hospital or someone at the store to, to go up to the person and say, you can't be on the property anymore. If, if the bill, under the proposal of the bill, a person who's on the grounds with a firearm has immediately committed the unlawful act. So there, there's no need for the anyone on staff or who works at the, at the facility to talk to the person uh, they could just call law enforcement right then and say, there's somebody here who's violated the law against being here with a, with a uh, firearm. Can you please come and arrest them? And if, if I might, Mr. Chair? Well, uh, or, go ahead. Yeah, go, no, I, I'm just, Eric, if we could research Brattleboro Court, they ran into problems because the Brattleboro Court went to private security right. without arrest powers. So yeah. they were frequently needing to call the Brattleboro Police Department, which is yep. next door to the courthouse, luckily, to come over and deal with cases that were not compliant with the rules uh, or the law, I shouldn't say rules of the law. So uh, maybe we should pre kind of research that and what happened. Maybe the you know, because it didn't happen in the presence of an officer. It happened in the presence of a security. Now, my hospital security is not that's security. Actually, it's not next door now. It's the, it's about three miles away. Okay, so, well, but they, but they don't through. have law enforcement ability. That's, tr that's true. They can't arrest anybody. They can just detain them. Right. So... Go ahead, Philip. I just wanted to mention that, that that's already a case in Brattleboro. We can get some information from the police there. So I, I just want to ask, um, is, it, is it possible then for a hospital or a business to adopt any condition that they want? Um, for instance, there was a case a few, day, uh, a few weeks ago where a guy pulled a gun on someone who wore a mask into his store because he was very, very anti-mask and he had a condition that you couldn't come into his store with a mask. And then somebody did and he pulled a gun on them and told them they had to leave. Can you create any condition and then no matter how disputed that condition and then have it fall under the no trespassing ordinance? Couldn't somebody think, argue? Yeah, I don't think you could. You, you couldn't, uh, for example, set out rules in a, in a sign or in any other manner that were themselves discriminatory or against the law, for example, or against the Constitution. You couldn't, for example, say persons of a certain race or ethnicity or religion can't come in here. Well, that's my point. Um, to, to go back to Joe's contention from the last time we talked about this, 
there are people who very fervently believe it's their constitutional right to carry a weapon into these places. And right now they can point to the fact that there is no state law against it. Um, and, and I just, I, I feel like sometimes we acknowledge that, but in this discussion of trespassing, we're acting like that wouldn't be a, a real problem. But that was one of the reasons I had for putting the bill forward is that people stand on their constitutional grounds, whether, you know, regardless of where they're told to leave with their weapon. And then it strengthens the hand of uh, the people who are trying to remove them if there's a state law as opposed to a hospital prohibition or a, or a, you know, a little restaurant in Burlington that puts up a sign that says you can't have a gun here. I can foresee a standoff where somebody would say, you, Joe Blow, who own this little taco stand, don't have the right to tell me I can't have my gun in here, as opposed to a state law that says X, Y, or Z. Um, oh, we're not talking about taco stands. No, no, but, but what, well, if, if Eric is right, then what he's saying is that any private establishment yeah, could, could do that, including a taco stand. And then right. they could charge no trespass. I right, but, but my point is that that will not be automatically honored because we have uh, a Second Amendment rights group that doesn't acknowledge the primacy of their private regulation. I, I would respectfully disagree with you there, Philip, because we've had two witnesses who represent gun groups yep. say specifically they acknowledge that a private institution has the right to ban them from bringing a weapon inside. Okay, then let, let, let me just call that bluff. Let's put a piece of language in the trespassing statute that says exactly what you just said, and they will oppose it tooth and nail. Why, but why would you, why would you do that? I mean, no, I'm, I'm right now, that, what? If, if I put a no trespass up that says, on my property, no trespass, period. I have the right to do that for any reason. I, I just I'm, don't I'm, want anybody. You, you, you do because it's your property. Right. If you, have, if you walk past a sign that says no shirts, not allowed, and you're not wearing a shirt when you go in past that sign, does the owner of that property have the right to eject you? I would argue, yes, they do. They have the ability to eject you, giving you the notice against trespass. I acknowledge Eric is correct that there has to be some interaction. Yeah. But when you're given that notice against trespass, you are now subjecting yourself to a criminal offense. Did, did you a hear? Violation Chris? of a notice against trespass. What Chris when Bradley bill, was saying. When though. this bill came about, I was extremely nervous. I start always with the premise that I have a constitutional right, which we're all sworn to protect, first and foremost. I understood with respect to uh, the hospitals that there was a concern about co people coming in with a weapon and stealing from the pharmacies. No, we don't have any evidence of that whatsoever. No, it wasn't stealing from the pharmacies, Joe. Uh, that was but what I heard is one of the excuses for the bill. That was from me, and that was an actual case that I had heard of. It. That okay. wasn't from a pharmacy downtown. It was from the hospital pharmacy. They were asking for drugs in the hospital, right. and they had a firearm. And I by just it's, but by itself, Dick, that is a criminal offense. If you are using the weapon with intent to get something you are already in violation of a criminal law. The hospitals have come in and testified, with the exception of the doctor we heard from the school, the hospitals have come in and said, we have these signs out front of all buildings. There hasn't been any evidence that I have heard thus far that somebody has violated that signage. Yes, we did hear testimony of that. No. Uh, if, yes. Uh, what I heard was if somebody came in, they were ejected. No, the that, Dartmouth incident, they violated the policy. The Philip, the Dartmouth 
incident involves a son shooting his mother yes. who had a brain aneurysm. And while I understand that is a problem, it by itself, his actions were criminal. Whether he came into Joe, the hospital or not, yes, it did not prevent him from committing the act. This okay. is a very interesting discussion. I We've do have one, about three minutes before the floor. I do action. have one point I, we I need I to go make. from Zoom to Zoom, um, and that is Chris Bradley was having it both ways. He was saying that, of course, any establishment can invoke a criminal prohibition against having a firearm. But at another moment, if you listen to him, he was very clear that he believes you have the right to concealed carry anywhere. You do. You okay. do. You do. Okay. But no, if, if there's a, you can't concealed carry in a courthouse and you can't concealed carry on school grounds because there's a state law against possessing the firearm. So that's what we're talking about. According to my iPad, it is now 1126. That gives us four minutes to get oh, to the floor. We better go. Vanessa well, likes I'm us to go early. I suggest that this is adjourned.